okay now uh, one very simple application and a very useful application also yeah uh, of this uh, compactness theorem is the upward Leeuwenheim Skolem theorem. Okay, what does this particular upward Leeuwenheim Skolem theorem say? Suppose L is a predicate language. and gamma and L theory. With an infinite model M. Okay. Uh, then yeah, for if, if kappa is an infinite cardinal bigger equal the size of L, then M has, uh, sorry, then gamma has a model n with size kappa. Okay, so uh, very interesting result here. Okay, but now let us talk for a bit. So, uh, once we have, let us say, a dense linear order without endpoints, hmm? do you know any model? Rational numbers, real numbers and now suppose you are interested in the, in the question, does there exist, I, I mean suppose your uh, uh, cardinality of interest is Aleph sub epsilon naught. You remember epsilon naught as an ordinal? Now you would like to know whether there is a model of this theory, dense linear order without endpoints, if there is a dense linear order without endpoints of cardinality Aleph sub epsilon naught. Yeah? Then this theorem will guarantee the existence of this. Okay? So what we are doing here? is that if you know that a model of certain cardinality exists, then you know that the model of any cardinality above that will also exist. Okay, so uh, let us do another example. So uh, this one also says if you take your language to be empty, L set, then and suppose you know that uh, for a theory there is a model of cardinality Aleph naught, a countable model exists for a theory. Then you know that there is a model of every cardinality. So essentially this upward Leeuwenheim Skolem theorem says that you can, uh, I mean the, cl the class of models if it contains one infinite structure, then it is a proper class because for each cardinality there is a model. Yeah, Eventually there is a model for each cardinality, that is what this says. And there is a very minor condition here uh, which says that kappa is an infinite cardinal and it has to be at least as large as the size of lang the language. If this is for a very silly reason. Yeah, because maybe, so assume that kappa is, uh, sorry, size of L is 2 to the Aleph naught. 
Do you remember any any language which has size two to the aleph not? Huh? A language with size two to the aleph not? The theory of R vector spaces. I mean the language of R vector spaces. There is one uh, unary function symbol for each real number. So obviously that theory is very large. Uh, that that language is large. It has two to the aleph not many symbols. The rest of the symbols are countable. So two to the aleph not plus a countable set. Well, that's that's done. And there is uh, also essentially, yeah. Uh, all those function symbols they act differently if your vector space is non-trivial. So obviously you shouldn't expect that there is a countable model. Can there exist a countable vector space, countable real vector space? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Right? So therefore we have this silly restriction. Okay? In fact, this theorem is going to say something more, but I will first write down the proof of this and the proof is actually very simple. And the technique that is uh, used for such kinds of proofs and that is a standard application technique for the compactness theorem, it is called expansion of language by constant symbols. So the idea, yeah, I mean before we actually write down the proof, the idea is very simple that you add, you want a structure with size kappa, okay. You add one constant symbol, one new constant symbol for every ordinal less than kappa. So how many ordinal, uh, how many new constant symbols are you adding? Kappa many. And then you put more sentences in your theory. You already have gamma and then you say whenever alpha and beta are distinct cardinals less than kappa, then C alpha and C beta are distinct their interpretations are different. This is our expansion of the theory. Once you have that, then you use the compactness theorem to show that it is finitely satisfiable, which we can do thanks to existence of an infinite model M. And then we are done. So we have a model of this entire theory, where there are at least k kappa elements. You, uh, you understand this? Let us do it. So, uh, okay, I mean perhaps, uh, yeah, I, I remember this from a previous time. Perhaps I, I should say that with size of n at least kappa, because the proof will not exactly guarantee that it is kappa. With the combination of upward and Leuven, uh, downward Leuwenhans Coulomb theorem, we will get this exactly kappa. Okay. So, consider uh, the expansion L bar of L, where we add one constant symbol, well I, I should say one new constant symbol, yeah. So you just make sure that it is a different name of the constant symbol, C alpha for each alpha less than kappa. So here I would like you to recall some set theory, some cardinals. Kappa is a cardinal number. So it is an initial ordinal. So it is an ordinal in particular. It is a limit ordinal and it is an initial limit, or, uh, limit ordinal. So kappa less like alpha less than kappa is simply alpha belongs to kappa, all the elements. And how many elements are there in kappa? Kappa many. Okay, so I have added one new constant symbol. Yes, for each ordinal alpha. And 
uh, set gamma bar to be an L bar theory defined as gamma union negation C alpha equal to C beta where alpha is not equal to beta and alpha and beta are less than kappa. Okay, we are going to claim that gamma bar is satisfiable so if you want to show something is satisfiable then what do you do you show that it is finitely satisfiable by compactness it is enough to show that gamma bar is finitely satisfiable. Okay. So, uh, we can, so let delta be a finite subset of gamma bar, then the sentences in delta contain only finitely many new constant symbols. Can you see that? Gamma is totally new constant symbol free. Only these ones are the sentences which contain new constant symbols. So, then the sentences in delta contain only finitely many new constant symbols. Say C alpha 1 dot 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 C alpha n. Okay. Then what can we say? Then delta is a subset of, we do not have any problem with gamma. We, have, oh, we only needed to control the size of new sentences that are added. So, negation C alpha i equal to C alpha j such that 1 is less equal i less than j less equal n. Do you agree with this? And have you seen some similar proof? You remember this proof of Koenig's lemma? Yeah, we only we added something new and then we want a finite subset of that. So, it is a standard compactness theorem application. Okay, so, uh, delta is a subset of this. Okay. Then, choosing C alpha i to be some element, sorry, uh, ok wait, uh, let me write it more properly. So, choosing C alpha i m where 1 is less equal i to be any finite subset of m. Yeah, so we are saying any finite subset of m where m is a model, an infinite model. See, why, why do we need it to be infinite? Because we want to interpret any finite number of distinct symbols as distinct elements. 
that's the only requirement you understand okay but if it were finite let's say it had size 100 then for 101 new constant symbols we couldn't really do this we want yeah the be any finite subset of m of size n okay so all these constant symbols which appear in delta we are interpreting them as distinct elements okay uh, we see that m satisfies gamma union this collection and hence m satisfies i mean sorry m bar satisfies and hence m bar satisfies delta okay uh, okay i i should make some changes okay uh, m is a model m is an l structure and m bar is an l bar structure yeah where i have yeah we obtain i should say we obtain an l bar structure m bar and we see that so we simply took m interpreted c alpha 1 as some element c alpha 2 as another element so because uh, we just need to give interpretation of all the symbols the only new symbols which we need to add are these okay the rest of them don't really matter so the rest is same as in m huh this rest is the one which comes from gamma is same as in m the, the don't say gamma it's an l structure so every symbol in l is interpreted just as as in m, m. yeah m as an l structure and actually i mean I, I can be more technical and say that this is an intermediate language right the intermediate language which consists of l and uh, c alpha 1 c alpha 2 c alpha n i can call it l prime and then i am defining an l prime structure here but all i need to ensure yeah i mean this can be made into an l bar structure also all i need to ensure is that c alpha 1 and c alpha 2 they are interpreted as distinct symbols so that m bar this new structure satisfies the right hand side and hence the left hand side and we are done using just modifications of one infinite structure we could prove this any questions your faces are blank we don't have any hurry yeah we proved it's a yeah that l bar structure so you interpret other constant symbols as anything apart from c alpha 1 c alpha 2 c alpha n other things are interpreted as anything we don't really care we only want that this one is satisfied no i didn't understand how it's still a model of gamma okay. it's a model of gamma bar i mean it's a model of that finite subset of this yeah. i mean are you confused why m is a, m bar is a model of the gamma end, the end of the entire group. yes no if, if if m bar is a model of gamma bar why is it a model m bar is not a model of gamma bar i'm saying m bar is a model of gamma union these new finitely many sentences it can't be a model of gamma bar i mean we want to find a model of gamma bar but for that we use compactness yeah okay so fine like suppose we found a model of gamma bar why does it imply we found a model of gamma bar? With, oh because gamma bar is gamma union something else no but it's in a different language yes but by reduction of language again 
Yeah, I mean you forget about all the new symbols. What is the confusion here? So therefore, okay, now uh, let me write, this is the end of the proof of the claim. So, uh, by compactness, let N, uh, so there is a model model N of gamma bar. Okay, so uh, let, let's say there is a model n n bar of gamma bar. Then what happens? Then thanks to yeah, I mean thanks to these sentences negation c alpha equal to c beta for alpha and beta distinct and less than kappa, we know that then n bar satisfies negation c alpha equal to c beta, alpha not equal to beta and alpha beta in like less than kappa, right. So, therefore, the universe n, n bar of n bar has at least kappa elements, kappa many elements, kappa elements. Do you agree with this much? Okay. Now, just like we expanded the language, we can also reduce the language. So, let n be an L structure. where the underlying universe is equal to n bar and each symbol in L is interpreted in N as the, the interpretation of that symbol. of uh, the symbol in n bar. So, this is called the, this is the L reduction of the L bar structure n bar. Okay, so for this, then then what will happen? Then n satisfies gamma, and n has size at least kappa. You get that? Every symbol was interpreted in exactly the same way. You simply forgot about the interpretation of the new constant symbols, and you obtained n. So, it is like, okay, uh, consider this natural numbers with order, okay. We have natural numbers with orders. Now, you add 0 to it. I mean, you have a language for orders and you add a constant symbol to it. So, natural numbers less than and 0 is a structure. Then, what is its reduction? to the language which consists of only the constant symbol, natural numbers comma 0, you simply forgot about less than. You can always forget some part of the language, yeah, that is called reduction, reduce structure for that language. Is your doubt clear? Do not seem so confident. <laughs> okay. No, interpretation does not have to be distinct. I just said that the interpretation is exactly the same. Here, 
The interpretation of the new constants has to be distinct because of these sentences. See that. How do you, when do you say, yeah, I mean, uh, when do you say, so uh, note that any structure K satisfies negation to C beta if and only if the interpretation of this in K is not equal to interpretation of this. Right? So, therefore, for every distinct pair of constant symbols, new constant symbols, their interpretations are different, which means there are at least kappa many elements. Uh, any problem? Feel free to ask more questions. I just want you to understand and get a feel of this. As you know, the proofs are not examinable, right? Only the sentences are. Okay? So, uh, let us do something different now. There is also a downward Leeuwenheim's Coulomb theorem. Maybe I should state that first and then we will, uh, we will not discuss the proof of it. It will be slightly complicated. Yeah, it uses some uh, new terminology called scolem functions, but we do not want to do that. But let me just state it. So, downward Leeuwenheim scolem theorem. Okay. Suppose L is a predicate language. And, uh, and gamma is a theory. M is an infinite model of cardinality model of I should say M is an infinite model of gamma with cardinality with size of m bigger equal size of l. Yeah, this is important again. Suppose mu is an infinite cardinal satisfying mu lies between size of L and size of M. Okay, now I can see why my mu and M are the same. <laughs> okay, but this is, maybe I will use a different cardinal number, okay, that, that, that is better. Uh, let me use little lambda. Okay. So, suppose lambda is possibly a smaller cardinal, then there is some structure, then there is N a model of gamma such that N is a substructure of M. Okay, so I can find the substructure of 
of m which is the model of gamma such that the size of n is your prescribed size lambda so for example yeah uh, do you all know algebraically closed fields is there anybody who doesn't know what is a field field has uh, what is the structure what is the language for fields it is the language for rings it has plus dot minus 0 and 1 okay then what are the field axioms associativity commutativity distributivity identity then inverse for addition only yeah i mean this associativity commutativity and uh, identity for all for both operations and then finally the uh, the sentence yeah i mean let me write down that sentence so so the theory so let l ring be this language f g h c e yeah this stands for plus dot minus 0 1 okay uh, then gamma a c f yeah the theory of algebraically closed fields yeah uh, contains the axioms for a ring yeah i am not going to write them down then the axiom that every non zero element has right so uh, what is that axiom let's write down that for all w if w is non zero then there exists a w prime such that g w w prime is equal to e and g w prime w is also equal to e yeah so the it has a multiplicative inverse so this is the axiom now can you tell me so the, so far we have covered all the axioms for a field now we want to say that it is an algebraically closed field how do we say that add an axiom for every polynomial of degree n add an axiom for every polynomial of degree n and where are the coefficients coming from So normally, if I want to say x square plus one has a sol x square plus one equal to zero has a solution, I will say that there exists W such that W W dot W plus one equal to zero. This formula is satisfiable. But what if I want to say that complex numbers are algebraically closed? Yeah, for all W one, W two, there exists. Exactly. So the coefficients, yeah. The coefficients are also coming from the field. So, you can also put a universal quantifier for the coefficients. Okay. So, uh, uh, and for each n bigger equal 1, add the following axiom. What is that axiom? For all w1, for all w2, dot 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 w, uh, perhaps I should say for all w0 onwards, yeah. I do not want to say start at 1. For all w0, w1, 
dot 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 w n and w. So, w is going to be our variable of the polynomial, one variable polynomial and w0 is the constant coefficient, w1 is the uh, coefficient of w, this is coefficient of w square and this is coefficient of wn. Okay. So, we are going to say if wn is non-zero, then just a moment, I think I should not write it over here. Yes, for all these coefficients, if wn is non-zero, then there is a, a w such that, now I am not going to use the complicated notation fgh, yeah, I am just going to write the polynomial in ordinary form such that wn w to the power n plus w n minus 1 w to the power n minus 1 plus dot 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 w 1 w plus w is uh, w 0 is equal to 0 and complete. So, it says that every non-zero polynomial, every uh, polynomial of degree n, yeah degree n is ensured by saying w n is non-zero every polynomial of degree n has a root. You understand? Okay. So, uh, you add these axioms. So, this is not a finite list of axioms. We are adding one axiom for each n bigger equal 1. Okay. So, by now we have got this theory of the uh, theory of algebraically closed fields. Okay. Now, uh, what is a model of the theory of algebraically closed fields? And now, note that complex numbers yeah, with plus dot minus 0 1 is a model of gamma ICF. Okay. And what is the cardinality of complex numbers? 2 power l f naught. Okay. And what is cardinality of L ring? Well, 5. <laughs> yeah, there is nothing to think about. Only 5 symbols exist there. So, 5 cardinality. So, for any infinite cardinal, therefore, for an infinite cardinal, lambda less than or equal to size of the complex numbers, say lambda equal to aleph naught, we know that it is strictly smaller. There is a model of gamma SCF with cardinality lambda. Okay, so now this is a question, do you know if there exists a countable algebraically closed field? Yeah, by, this by this theorem, yes, but otherwise do you know that? We have already seen a hint of this in our course. You remember where was one particular tutorial problem where I asked you to show that all algebraic numbers are countable, countably many. What is an algebraic number? It is a solution of a polynomial equation with integer coefficients. You remember that? What is an integer coefficient? I can use this language to write down any polynomial with integer coefficient because if I want to say minus 5x square plus 3x plus 2, I can say 1 plus 1 plus 1 5 times then put a minus sign because minus exists in my language 
and then I can say multiplied by x multiplied by x and add 3x. So with integer coefficients, I don't even need to add this first string of quantifiers, this one. Okay, integer coefficients, you can write them down very easily. You are not asking whether there is a solution of the polynomial pi x plus 3 equal to 0. You are asking for something very simple. And you have shown that the set of algebraic numbers is countable. In fact, the set of algebraic numbers forms this. Uh, this is a model. Yeah. So, uh, the set the set of algebraic numbers say it is uh, usually denoted q alg bar okay this is is countably infinite and this q alg bar is also an algebraically closed field. And the proof of the downward Lewenheim's Coulomb theorem will actually generate this. What it does, yeah, I mean, I will give you a, uh, some sketch of the proof in this case. You start with one polynomial equation. Okay? Then, if it has a solution, then you add that solution. You start with a countable set, let us say integers. You always know integers do exist. Yeah? So, you start with countable subset of C. Any countable subset would do actually. Yeah? But uh, I am starting with integers. Then I write down all polynomials, polynomial equations in uh, with coefficients from the chosen set Z. Then, if that polynomial has a solution, I can list all of them, right? Yeah. So, step uh, one by one, I ask whether this formula has a solution. If it has a solution, then I will add one solution using axiom of choice for each of those formulas to my set. So, I keep increasing my set. Okay? And once I have done that, I repeat the process because now maybe I have added root 2, x square plus two, minus 2 is equal to 0, I have added root 2, but now I also want to make sure that uh, yeah, because of this property that a polynomial with coefficient root 2 also has a solution. So, I repeat the process with newly found coefficients and again I keep doing that countably many times. And after that, whatever union of sets I obtain, that will be my gamma SCF, uh, the, this Q algebra. Okay, that's how you prove the statement. Prove downward Lewenheim's Coulomb theorem. Yeah, in fact, this is not the only model, only countable model. I'll give you more, but tomorrow.